What's up guys, this is Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. I'm here today at Furman Dodge Wesley Chapel bringing you the brand new 2020 Dodge Challenger RT with the scat back, wide body. MSRP starts at $38,995. The model we have today is at $57,745. This vehicle is the best bang for your buck. Naturally aspirated Hemi V8, 6.4 liter, 392 cubic inch underneath the hood of this thing, powering 485 horsepower with 475 pound-feet of torque, matted to a ZF eight-speed automatic transmission. And the best part, you could still get this in a six-speed manual. Zero to 60 is around 4.3 seconds in this rear wheel drive. We're gonna go through all the specs starting now. Challenger has four different bad boy engine trims. The one we've already went over, you can get the little bit toned down RT 5.7 Hemi V8. That one has 375 horsepower with 410 pound feet of torque. Standard on your SRT Hellcat would be a supercharged 6.2 liter Hemi SRT V8, 717 horsepower with 656 pound feet of torque. It's crazy. But to beat that, they have a Hellcat. Hemi Red Eye, that's a supercharged 6.2 liter Hellcat Hemi, 797 horsepower with 707 pound feet of torque. On these models, you can also get your available active exhaust system, available three mode electronic stability control with full on, full off, or partial off. That helps adjust any of the handling for your control. You're getting your LED daylight runnings, automatic headlights in the vehicle. You're not gonna get as many flares as you would on other vehicles for the price point. However, what you're getting is a track everyday car that's worthy for the price point. The Scat Pack adds a 6,000 premium and that's to add the 3.5 inches on the side of the vehicle, making the actual width at 79.2 inches and the height at 57.7 inches. Ground clearance on the vehicle isn't necessarily too bad. You do have this actual spoiler lip here and it is huge. It's literally like three to four inches long. So it really helps with downforce. The ground clearance is around 5.2 inches. You got that nice wide stance, the lines that run through the hood, very aggressive, gives kind of like a snake to a actual demon type look as well. I like the heat extractors that's on the hood and that intake, it just looks really nice and stylish on this Challenger. Before we talk about what the Dodge Challenger is that we have today, we should talk about what it was. The Dodge Silver Challenger had a two year production run back in 1959. That was more or less the first Dodge Challenger. Then in 1970, the first generation came out off of the Chrysler E platform. This took components off of the Plymouth Barracuda, large wheelbase, around nine different engine trims and loads of trims. 1971, they had a facelift. They changed the grill, trim, and options. Here, new EPA cut different engine trims out of the production. Also, you'll remember, this is the same time frame of the Indy 500, where we had a wreck due to breaking late and injuring multiple photographers. 1972 wasn't any better. That facelift that we added made the car look sad. The three engine trims were underpowered for what the car used to be with a 318 cubic inch V8 150 horsepower or a 340 cubic inch V8 with 240 horsepower 
or a 225 cubic inch six with 110 horsepower. No longer offering convertibles in the RT, buyers could opt for a sunroof. 1973, only two engine trims, US government added new bumper regulations that if you hit something at five miles an hour or slower, you do no structural damage to the actual vehicle. Four years off of the Mitsubishi Galat, powered by a 1.6 liter I-4 or a 2.6 liter Hemi I-4 with 104 horsepower, also powering Mitsubishi engines. So they went through a lot of different trial and errors, now bringing it back, built off the Chrysler rear wheel drive LX platform, shared with the Chrysler 300, shared with the Dodge Charger, powered by a 6.1 Hemi engine. That was in the top trim. In 2008, the Challenger gets a facelift from the front and the rear. 2015, the first SRT Hellcat Hemi supercharged V8 with 707 horsepower. 2018, they did some revising, and then we also had the Demon. This Scat Pack wide body is set with 20 inch devil rims. And this is something that is really nice. If you look at them, they're also a fog aluminum, just a really nice pop to it. These wheels are insane. You are at 305, 35 on the set. So this is more than track worthy. You can take corners without any problems. And they also have modes on the vehicle, which we'll go over on the interior that you can use to actually warm up the rear wheels. Brembo six piston front brakes with a two piece rotor that helps with cooling and performance. So you have plenty of brakes, 15.4 on the disc. So if you've ever ordered pizza, a 15 inch pizza is basically bigger than Pizza Hut. I believe the biggest one they sell is a 14 inch. That's the actual disc on the front. Your rear, you're gonna have four pistons with those Brembo brakes. The disc reading here is gonna be at 13.8 inches. You got this all set with the red brake calipers, which looks really nice. It's around a $595 upgrade. The wide body fender flares, which are integrated in all four corners, 3.5 inches more in the width just makes it stand out a lot more than your 2019 model. This one also has your larger adaptive damping systems. That actually is all set with that scat pack for that $6,000 upgrade. The length of the vehicle is at 197.9 inches with the wheelbase at 116.2. I also love this line structure that just floats through the vehicle, it gives that muscle car heritage, and that's exactly what you want out of any Challenger. On the rear of this Challenger, adding this SRT performance spoiler, $995 upgrade. However, when you're getting a scat pack wide body, this is something you wanna add because this is gonna help with downforce on the drag. Also, whenever you're taking the corners, it just looks phenomenal. And I like this matte black that's on it so it does give a little bit more of a stance to the vehicle. Dual exhaust tips that are stain and steel. I do wish they had a little bit more pop because the exhaust note is very throaty and very nice and athletic. Cargo space in this thing is really good. You're at 16.2 cubic feet. Gonna get standard rear parking sensor and a rear camera on the vehicle. Now we're gonna start the engine, give it some ribs so you can hear how beefy this engine is. fob for this Dodge Challenger, as you can see. It's pretty much a standard Dodge key fob, but this one again is the RT Scat Pack wide body. So even if somebody sees the key fob, once they see this vehicle, they're gonna get blown away. This does have your plus package, which is around a $2,095 upgrade that has some interior specs, which we'll go over. This one has your driver convenience group package, which is around $1,295. That gives you your blind spot, a rear cross path detection, as well, your high intensity discharge headlights, your power multi-folding mirrors that are also manual fold. So you could just manually fold them upwards like this to kind of make it easier to get in and out of anywhere. Let me know what you think about the exterior of this Challenger as we get ready to go into the interior, take it for our drive, go over that infotainment system and the reverse camera. The interior of this Challenger, I think the 
best thing that we should talk about first is the 180 mile per hour speedometer on this vehicle. That just sets it apart from any vehicle, especially in this price point, because you can get this car around 40,000, not spec'd out like this, but still with 180 mile per hour speedometer, that's crazy. You'll also be getting the Scat Pack logos in the Napa leather. That's also an Alicatair seat. That's also ventilated and heated 10-way power adjustable with lumbar support for the driver. Four-way power adjust for the passenger. Your steering wheel, I wish that they had more of a bling. I do like the logo on the side of the Dodge. I just, because of the vehicle that I'm in, the wide body and the actual look through the hood, when I look at the steering wheel, I almost feel like I'm in a truck. It is a functional and it does have a nice leather wrap, heated, it has some perforated leather here. It's multi-function. Paddle shifters are not necessarily what I would have liked it's not ideally the setup that I would do, but it does have functionality on the back of the steering wheel as well for your 8.4 Uconnect touchscreen navigation. That itself is around a $709 upgrade. You get your Bluetooth connectivity, so your Apple CarPlay, your Android Auto. You're getting two USB ports and an auxiliary inside here with a pretty sufficient amount of storage. You can fit, you know, some lunch or, you know, a few drinks cup holders, real carbon fiber inlays and suede throughout the vehicle. That package is $1,595. We have that in here. This has the Alpine stereo system in it as well, so it does have a nice little pop. This vehicle has your eight-speed ZF transmission with remote start, leather wrap on the shift knob. This is around a $1,595 upgrade. It does make a nice little pop if you're not really accustomed to a manual transmission. 4G LTE is also available for your hotspot HD radio Sirius XM. Your headroom at 39.3 inches. It is a lot. Leg room's even better at 42 inches. And realistically, if you want, you can move these seats even further back. So you can actually opt that head space and leg space. So somebody that's almost seven foot tall can drive this vehicle with no problem. That long hood also, the way it's structured, you can actually tell where the ending is. So they did a really good job sculpting it. Leather dashboard, I really like that as well. This vehicle does have your launch control, which again, a vehicle at 38,000 MSRP to have launch control that's a family car that's a sports car that's a drag car you're getting all those worlds incorporated in the package of this 392 scat pack wide body challenger the rear of this challenger headroom at 37.1 inches legroom at 33.1 inches i have scooted down a little bit so that way i can actually fit more the seat is in the position that i would be sitting and i can actually fit relatively comfortable my head does graze the headliner that's why i've actually scooted down a bit that way my legs protrude on the door panels is actually really cool because there's a little cubby here on the side that can be used for the back seat people you have two cup holders here in the center and some ac vents it is a dual zone climate control, so you do actually feel the air kind of circulate around the actual cabin, which is nice. We're going to see how I fit in the center. All right, guys, this is obviously not the optimal sitting position for me. I do sit a little bit higher up because the seats kind of bow up. However, if there was people under six foot tall, you could possibly fit three people. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it at being six foot or higher, but it is a possibility even at the seats in the positions that I would be sitting in both of the front seats. However, sliding onto these sides is definitely more desirable. It does actually block the center ventilation for your air condition in the back, but the way the seats are sit, I do kind of feel cocooned in. I don't really feel claustrophobic. I feel like I'm getting ready to go into a race as we get ready to take this for our test run. 485 horsepower, it's just an immense. The vehicle sounds really nice. Right now I'm just driving it at a low RPM. So we're only hitting two RPMs to just let you understand how loud this engine really is. We're gonna do a turn radius and we're gonna give it some gas and we're gonna see how well this vehicle performs. In your turn radius, this is at a complete stop. You're gonna be getting about a lane and a half, which is really nice as well. Flooring it. Oh yeah. 
she shifts really nice. When you put it down in the gear, it's just ready to go full throttle. The actual sound of the car is really nice as well. I think they did an excellent job with the way the vehicle is actually set up. The traction control, everything. When you put it in a sports mode, I will say it does get a lot more aggressive than your regular mode. I just love that exhaust note. I mean, I could just hit three, four RPMs all day long. It just sounds so nice tuned very well. All right, so we stopped in the middle of the road here, put it into a normal drive and give it some full throttle. Oh yeah. And these wide tires, I feel like they just grip the road. They are super sticky for any type of occasion, whether you're driving it for full blown performance or just a regular daily driver. What I also like is the abilities to actually do that. So you click into your navigation, really easy and you can just change it into an auto mode very simple on that as well again a lot of the functionalities on the vehicle is very easy to use user friendly and it's also a very quick vehicle so this one i would definitely say is a good combination of raw power and the ability to drive normal as well. We're going to take this back to Furman Dodge and go over that reverse camera and wrap this review up. Going over this 8.4 inch touchscreen Uconnect, which does have the pinch gestures. You also have the swipe gestures. You can click onto your apps. This will show every single thing that you have in the vehicle, heated, ventilated seats, so forth and so on. It is touch sensitive, so you have to swipe fast. Otherwise, you can click these little icons. One thing that I really wanted to go into is the performance page. This this is really nice because you can do pretty much every single thing in this page. So in the performance page, this tells you your power, your torque, and this is real time, which is really good. That's for the dyno. For your engine, this actually tells you how much PSI for your pound feet of torque and your horsepower when you're pushing the throttle. Also showing you all the gauges here on the side. Your G-force reading, which is really nice. And again, guys, this is a car that's under $40,000 MSRP. So you can get this with that price point. Amazing. You got your gauges here, which is also really nice. It tells you your transmission temperature and your intake air temperature. You also have your timer set here for your drag strip. And look how in depth it goes. It literally tells you from an eighth of a mile, a quarter of a mile, a thousand feet, so forth and so on. You can also click over here and it'll tell you how good you are for acceleration, for braking. You can save all your data and you can do it also with a USB as well. You click into the home, this will tell you your actual gauges and this is right now time. So whenever you actually push the throttle, you'll see how that horsepower goes up. See how it's going up as I'm riving it up just a really cool little thing. Clicking back into your apps, you also have your Wi-Fi hotspot. You also have your active services. This one is really interesting, the marketplace. Unfortunately, because the car isn't activated, we can't really use it. But this, you can actually add things and you can also do things like booking reservations for restaurants, so forth and so on. You have your climate control, your navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, yada, yada, yada. Click into your navigation. Very simple. And that's why this system is so user-friendly and easy. You can also do your climate control here and you can just kind of move it up and down or you can actually use the knobs here because it actually has buttons and all that carbon fiber inlays as well which is real and throughout the dash. Going into your gauge cluster. On the gauge cluster I have it set with the speedo on the center. 180 mile per hour reading on this odometer. Redlining right at 6 rpms and you do have a lot of settings in the vehicle. You have total of 11 different screens. You can configure it any different way, messages, your audio, you can do for your trip, your fuel economy. And it's pretty cool because you can, you know, see the actual gauges, driving assist package. So you have your adaptive cruise control, your performance, which is also really nice because you can actually see everything in real time right here, which is really cool as well. And then you can also click for other vehicle pieces of information. Going over the reverse camera, the lines do move. So it is very easy in that perspective. The screen is pretty clean. It's not as HD resolution as I would like. And you can see the finger residue does get on the screen. You do have the sensor functionalities in your odometer here for your rear as well. I'd like to thank Christina and Chris here at Furman Dodge in Wesley Chapel for giving us this 2020 Dodge Challenger RT Scat Pack wide body for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click the subscribe button, check out the merchandise, the details, and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rides.